We're going to begin with very serious news, and it's in the Middle East, with the worst fighting between Israel and Palestinians in nearly seven years. <laughs> Listen and look at those pictures. You are looking at Israeli missiles exploding in Gaza overnight, just one of the many attacks since this latest confrontation flared up. Palestinian militants have fired hundreds of rockets at Israel. About 50 people have been killed on both sides, including some children. Elizabeth Palmer is following all of this. Elizabeth, what led to the violence to begin with? Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, this round of violence actually started weeks ago with an Israeli court order to evict some Palestinian families from their homes in East Jerusalem. But it really caught fire over the weekend just gone by when Israeli police clashed with Palestinian protesters around the very holy Al-Aqsa Mosque. Now, of course, it's morphed into open war. Overnight, Israeli airstrikes pounded Gaza again. The target, says the Israeli military, are Hamas and Islamic Jihad leaders and their installations. The material damage is immense. And for humans in this overcrowded enclave, there is no safe place. Nine-year-old Yazan Zahara happened to be in the street when a missile exploded with shrapnel. The Palestinian Health Authority says 48 people have died this week, including 14 children, and hundreds are wounded and traumatized. The counterattack on Israel by Hamas and Islamic Jihad has been relentless, too. Yesterday evening, a rocket barrage lit up the skies over Tel Aviv, while on the ground, sirens wailed and people ran for cover. Israel's military says more than a thousand rockets have been fired from Gaza. Six Israelis, including a child, have been killed since Monday. The casualties and the damage would have been greater, but for Israeli interceptor rockets, the so-called Iron Dome, which blew most of the incoming missiles to pieces. But this is not just an air war. There's been violence on the ground, too. Last night in Ramallah on the West Bank, Israel's military fired tear gas to chase away hundreds of young men who, like most Palestinians, have had enough of the Israeli occupation. And there is no end in sight. Israeli's defense minister this morning said that more attacks were coming on armed Palestinian groups to bring what he called total long-term quiet. Tony? Yeah, no end in sight. Liz Palmer in London. We should recall that this is going on in Gaza, which is the size of Philadelphia, yeah. in a country that's barely bigger than Vermont. And the end result is that each night, families and children are going to bed afraid, terrified. But, Tony, that made me think about you. Including your own, my own. Your own children. Including my own. Some people two may know. I, I have two there. older kids who, yeah. who live with their mother in Tel Aviv. They spent yeah. the night in an air raid, uh, in a shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter was in tears. Uh, and I'm also acutely aware of the fact that over in Gaza, there are children going to bed in a pile of rubble, not getting up. Yeah. And so you have a situation where for decades now, leaders on both sides seem to be finding the war instead of finding the peace. Yeah. And until that dynamic changes, our children, my children, are going to be fighting and dying. Do you feel they're safe? Because how old are your two older children? Uh, about almost 12 night. and yeah. 9. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're very well aware of what they're is happening. They're very well aware. And, and, and when I say our children will be fighting and dying, I mean, my 12-year-old will be going to the military in six yeah. years. And, and, and everybody is sucked into the conflict in that region until there is a push or a restart to a search for peace. And when you have two people for one country, there's got to be two countries. It's the only way to do it. And I feel for you doing this job, worrying about your yeah, kids, about your new kids. baby on the yeah. way. Yeah. Oh.